Okay, today I'd like to show you the origin of the sine curve and the equation that um, will help us map out sine curves. Think about an arrow with length a that is laying along the x-axis pointing to the right. Now imagine this arrow rotating counterclockwise with one end at the origin and the other end sweeping out a circle. What we want to do is we want to track the tip of the arrow and we want to look at its Y position as it rotates. When it was in its original position, its Y location would be zero. It is along the X axis, so it has a Y value of zero. As we start to move to bigger angles, we'll see that the Y value increases. We can find the Y value at any given angle by using the expression Y equals A which is the hypotenuse of this triangle times the sine of the angle. And you can see that the y value increases until it reaches a certain maximum value and that maximum value will occur when your angle is pi over 2. The y value will then start decreasing as we continue to increase the angle until we get to a point where the y value is once again zero. This occurs when our angle is pi radians or 180 degrees. As we continue to rotate, our y values will become negative and they will increase until they reach a maximum negative value of A and that will occur at 270 degrees, which we're gonna call three pi over two radians. The y value will then increase again across the negative numbers until it gets back to zero and that will occur after one full revolution, which is two pi radians. When we plot out the y position as a function of angle, we'll see that it starts at zero, it increases to a maximum value of a, and that occurs at pi over two radians. It comes back to zero at pi radians, goes to its negative maximum at three pi over two radians, and comes back to zero after two pi. This pattern will then continue, and at each integer pi, you'll be at zero, and at each odd number times pi over two, you'll be at your maximum or minimum value. The equation for this curve is y equals a sine theta. Most of the time, though, we don't want theta to be our variable, but we want our variable to be time. So we're gonna write theta is equal to bt where B tells you how quickly this object is sweeping out the circle. The B will be measured in radians per second. So if you had a B value of two pi radians per second, that means it's sweeping out one circle every second. If you had a B value of four pi radians per second, that means you're sweeping out two circles every second. So as this thing goes, if you wanted to find your B value, you would time how long it takes to make a revolution, figure out how many radians per second it's going, and that would be your B value. The faster it sweeps out the circle, the higher the B value, and the more quickly your sine curves occur. Sometimes it's more convenient to find the B value by realizing that B is equal to two pi times your frequency where frequency is the number of revolutions you make per second. So if you made one revolution per second, your B value is two pi. If you made two revolutions per second, your B value is four pi. Okay, so you would time it again, figure out how many oscillations it makes per second, that's your frequency, multiply that by two pi, and that will be your B value. So your new equation for the sine curve will be y equals a times sine of bt, where b is 2 pi f. Our graph looks just like it did before, but you'll notice instead of having our x-axis labeled angle, it's measured time. Okay, so as time goes on, this object is going to sweep out your sine curve. The uh, rate at which it sweeps them out is our b value in radians per second. Okay, realize that your arrow does not always have to start lying horizontally along the x-axis. So if the arrow started at some random angle C, that would cause your uh, sine curve to be shifted by that same amount. So instead of my y value starting at zero, 
my y value would start at the sine a times the sine of c. Okay, so it's still going to sweep out the circle just like it did before. It's still going to produce a sine curve just like it did before. It's just that it's not going to have a starting y value equal to zero. Instead, it will have a starting y value equal to a times the sine of c. So your graph may look something like this. In this case, you'll notice that the uh, sine curve started when the arrow was pointing straight up and therefore the y value was at its maximum value. That gives you a phase shift of pi over two. If our sine curve starts out here, it meant our arrow started out along the x-axis, but it was pointing left. That gives you a phase shift of pi. And if the uh, sine curve started when the arrow was pointing straight down, we saw that that was a value of three pi over two, and your sine curve would look like that. So you should be able to equate in your mind these different pictures with these different phase shifts. So if you start at the highest point, it's pi over two. If you start at zero heading down, it's pi. And if you start out at the lowest point, that's a phase shift of three pi over two. Other phase shifts are possible, but you will not be responsible for being able to visually determine them. Okay, in addition to a phase shift, sometimes you'll have your arrow start out horizontal, but it will not be uh, located at the origin. So you'll notice that the uh, left side of this arrow, the non-point side, the point that we're rotating about, is no longer at the origin, but it shifted up a distance d. What this is going to do is raise all of your values for y up by a value of d. So you'll hit zero, not at zero degrees or zero radians, but when your arrow crosses the x-axis like there and there. Okay, so it's still going to look like a sine curve. It's just that all the values will have been shifted up by a distance d. It'll look something like this. You'll notice your highest point is no longer a, but it's a plus d. The amplitude plus the vertical shift will tell you the highest value that you get to. So your equation for the sine curve will now look something like this. Realize you could have a vertical shift and a phase shift. So you'll notice the dotted line is the line that bisects your curve. And that is shifted up by a distance d. Again, the highest value that you get which actually this time occurs at the very beginning, is A plus D. To see whether or not you're able to use this skill, try to figure out the equation for this um, sine curve. You start out by looking for the bisecting line, and you can see that at 40 centimeters, if you drew a horizontal line, that would bisect your sine curve. You'll notice that the highest point you reach is 60 centimeters which means you have an amplitude of 20 centimeters. You'll notice that your sine curve starts where the sine curve is supposed to start, so there is no phase shift. And to get the B value, you just count your number of cycles, and in this case there are 12, in your time of four seconds. You divide the two and you'll get a frequency of three. You multiply that by two pi, and that will give you your B value. So your final equation would say 20, times sine of 6 pi t plus 0, close your parentheses, plus 40. If you still need more help with this, there are practice problems on my website. Please try them and make sure you can master this skill.